then the if you don't have a noble aim and 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 if that isn't imbuing your life with sustainable meaning then you fall prey to all the catastrophe that and when you get bitter you get mean and you get cruel and you start to hurt yourself and other people you're always the the analogy is that in in life like in sports you're 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 setting forth an aim and then arranging your perceptions and your actions in pursuit of that aim and that you also generally do it while cooperating and competing with other people right. so that's also the game like element as well all yeah. of that's dramatized in athletics yeah that's like philosophy for people who aren't philosophical and i'm not being smart about that yeah. you know? it's like it really is philosophy for people who aren't being philosophical because it's played out you know and you can see it too you can see the spontaneous appreciation for the human spirit manifest itself when you see people rise to their feet spontaneously mm -hmm. in a sports arena when they see someone do something particularly remarkable you see an athlete who's extremely trained stretch themselves beyond what you'd think is a normative human limit and yeah. everyone celebrates that like spontaneously so it's quite something to yeah. to behold and so taking back to responsibility and meaning yeah. <clears throat> when we're watching sports or someone do this act what does this do for us with in terms of responsibility and meaning well it 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 helps us figure out what we can imitate it gives us a model. Right? Yes, it's a model. It's right? a model of something that I respect. Mm -hmm. Well, even what philosophy is, or even theology, for that matter, is an abstract model. Like it's laid out in words. Now, the problem often is, is it becomes so abstract that people don't know how to bring it back down to, to, to embodiment. Yeah. Yes. Whereas something like like the drama of a sports event is sort of midway between philosophy and action. Right. Mm. It's, so it's it's not entirely abstracted because it's not only coded in words. It's acted out. It's visual. You can see mm -hmm. an example of what just happens, mm -hmm. and you can try to reverse engineer how they mm -hmm. did that. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, exactly. Well, at, le at least you, the fact that you admire the person means that you might start to try to act like them. Now, mm -hmm. it's not easy, and maybe that, would mean, maybe that would mean that you start to discipline yourself with regards to a particular sport, but it might also be that you start to mimic or are at least affected in some way by their, their sportsman-like sportsman behavior, right? Yeah. Which is the ground of a certain kind of ethic because if you can play well with others which is sort of the hallmark of a good sport then that actually means that you're a reasonably sophisticated and civilized person it's really important to learn to play well with others there isn't yeah. that's the ground of ethics and if you can do it there in that setting then hopefully you could translate it into life well, setting well right that's exactly right that's, that's what the you, goal well that's what you hope for right. yeah that's the goal of the so if the if the goal of the game is to put the ball through the ball into the net then the goal of having games is to produce people who can take proper aim no matter where they are right that's exactly what we're trying to do with mm -hmm. with 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 athletics so uh, uh, so I've been talking to my audiences a lot about that about the and well and there's more to it too because if the background of life is is there's a there's an ineradicable component of suffering and that's complicated by let's say malevolence and the proclivity of people to betray themselves and others which which complicates it and makes it worse then the if you don't have a noble aim and 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 if that isn't imbuing your life with sustainable meaning then you fall prey to all the catastrophe the pain and the anxiety and the anger that that suffering generates and that makes you bitter because what i'm hearing you say is that and correct me if I'm wrong, we must have an aim in our life no matter what stage of life we're mm -hmm. in. And if we don't have some type of aim, even if for a few months of an aim of going somewhere or direction, mm -hmm. we're gonna, the suffering's gonna be even more suffering. Mm -hmm. because, Pointless. Because we're already gonna face the greatest challenges in That's life. That's right. You're we're stuck with it. We're already struggling. That's right. There's no way Adversity out of Adversity is coming no matter what. That's right. If we have big goals or mm -hmm. small little goal or whatever it may be, but it's going to be less suffering if we mm -hmm. have an aim. Yeah, well, and, and not only that, it's worse than that even because the suffering is <laughs> pain. zero meaning. Well, yeah. the suffering is pain and the suffering is anxiety and uncertainty and the suffering is hopelessness. But the consequence of all that is that you get bitter. And mm. when you get bitter, you get mean and you get cruel and you start to hurt yourself and other people. So it's not only that if you don't have a goal, you suffer. It's that you, if you don't have a goal, you suffer and then you get cruel and bitter and resentful and then you start to actively try to make the world a worse place mm. and so so because you can't <clears throat> suffer pointlessly without becoming bitter and you can't become bitter without becoming cruel 
So you need a name. The question is, then the question, of course, is what aim. you should aim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A better aim. Yeah, a better aim. That's for sure.